Perfect. I'm glad you can hear me. Okay, we have got a really good topic. This is one of my favorite topics. You know, I said some years ago that my goal in life was to ensure that every travel professional uh, who's doing business and is actively selling travel is also charging fees. So I always love to talk about fees because I am still surprised by so many of you who are not charging or still charging low fees. So today is all going to be about that. So before I get started, uh, just want to know what, where you guys are from, where and what you are drinking. I am drinking some agua, some water, trying to stay hydrated. Um, apologize for being late, but let me know in the comments where are you coming from, where are you listening, tuning in from, and what are you drinking because this is happy hour time. You should come to these lives with a pen and paper and a cocktail. That's what I always say. You should start these lives every Wednesday with a cocktail in hand and ready to learn learn some something new all right that's my goal if i can accomplish that then i feel like i've accomplished quite a bit so all right we got some people who are from florida atlanta someone who needs a drink <laughs> you're still at work uh thanks for joining me during your work time i'm gonna i'm gonna do a hit and run i'm gonna i'm gonna drop this knowledge drop these nuggets and then i'm gonna run um i am still not fully uh um, I am still not fully set up in my office, but every week I intend to do something better, have something more done than I did before. So my background has changed. I've got my green screen ready to do next week or next next video recording I do. Um, uh, but I'm happy to be here. Super excited to have you guys join me live for those who are. For those that catch me in a replay, do not forget to push hashtag replay. So in normal order, let's ask some questions about the type of people who have joined us live and what I've got in the audience today. So how many of you, um, how many of you are charging services, service fees for your services? How much of your revenue is from services, right? Right. And people are like, if you don't know what I mean, the kind of services I mean are like planning research, custom itineraries, consultation, coaching. What is the percentage of your revenue that is from services? Zero to 10, 10 to 20. You know, what what is the, the mix of your revenue? Some of you may just say zero because I don't charge anything. Maybe it's a very small percentage, but I really like to know what is what is your revenue mix? How much of your revenue is from service fees or is 100% of your revenue from commission commission from suppliers? So zero would be 100% is from commission, none. All right. All right. Let me know in the comments, what is the percentage of your revenue from service fees? All right. So... Love, love it. So many, so many of you are telling me that uh, I just started charging. I'm charging a uh, little. I got zero to ten percent. You know, so you've got zero to ten. All right. So you know, and that's that's usually you know, I I this this topic actually became sort of a hot topic for me a couple of years ago. I read this article from the Har. Reviews, so host agency reviews website. And every year that that website does a poll of uh, travel professionals to see what their revenue mix is. And so, you know, even COVID aside, so in 2018, 19, 20, and even this year, she does a poll and she does it, dedicates a, a blog post or, you know, like a whole section on agency fees and the majority of travel professionals still are not charging for their services. So when I see these numbers, I'm not surprised, right? But after today and after the training that I will point you to, you have no reason not to change this, okay? So number two question is, how many of you would like your revenue to increase and be 
a larger part of your revenue. How many of you would like, so just put, you know, me or one in the comments, if you would like your revenue for your business to be 50 plus percentage, right? The percentage of the revenue that you are collecting in your business is either 50% or more from services. Put in the comments, me or one, that you would like that. Put a zero if you don't really want that. You really want to just keep going status quo. All right, getting a couple of me's, right? And I know this is a little hard of a concept, right? Because you're not charging and then you want to go from zero to 50%. Like, is that even, you know, is that even feasible? Many of you are charging um, are, or are not charging, you probably don't even think it's feasible that you could have 50% or more of your revenue from your travel business be from services, services that you charge, right? Okay, so I want you to be thinking about that. And so my last question is, what's stopping you from making that happen today? If you are, if you replied me or one, what is stopping you from making your revenue 50% or more from services today? Why aren't you doing it? Right? That's what I want to know is so for all of those people that raised their hand just now and said me or yes, I want more, I want 50% or more of my revenue that I get in my travel business to be service fee based. Why aren't you doing it? What's preventing you from doing it? Right? And I want you to be honest. Like why, why aren't you doing it? Okay. While you guys continue to answer those questions and those uh, trickle in, you know, someone just typed my current audience is the reason why, right? Afraid that fees will run clients off. These are honest answers, right? And these are not answers that I'm surprised of due to the economy. Not sure how much to charge, right? You're going to want to write. You're going to want to get your piece of paper out and you're going to want to take notes today because this training today is for you. Haven't found my tribe right? All of these are reasons that I get all the time. Get You're afraid of getting a no, right? Okay, so for those of you who are new and who have joined me live and those that may catch me in the replay, let me introduce myself. My name is Sunday Gardner, the online travel boss. I come to you talking all things launching, operating, and the mindset of a successful and profitable travel business. I am super excited that you are watching this training today. And what we are going to talk about is how to make service revenue your primary money maker in your travel business. Are you guys excited about this? Like, how do you make service revenue your primary money maker when you don't know how to? You're afraid that people are going to say no. You, you think the economy is going to prevent you. How do you circumvent all of that and actually effectively and consistently Consistently start charging for your services and that be the main source of the income in your business. Are you guys excited about that topic? Like I am super excited. Like I actually went, you know, right before this live and I like reread the article that inspired this topic for me many years ago. I reread it and I'm refired up again and I'm like, yes, that's like what I want to like. That's what that's like the story that I want to hear from my clients is them telling me, yeah, I charged 200. Yeah, I charged 300. I charged for my services collectively collected that before I did one stitch of work, right? That excites the hell out of me when my clients come in my inbox or they're in our inner circle and they're talking about that. So, you know, somebody's like Dan Sk Dank Skippy, right? Um, I love it. All right. So before we get started, what I want to do is I want you guys to realize that you made a choice when you started your business for services not to be your main money maker. That was a choice that you made either consciously or subconsciously, but you are where you are because you've chosen not to do it. There is no one to blame but you. And even because you don't have the knowledge to, it is still your responsibility. So each of you today have the power to change your trajectory. Each of you today have the ability to charge not only 
for your services, but charge more than $25 per person. Because that seems to be the standard rate when people tell me that they do charge, right? I asked a question yesterday in the group and I asked, you know, are you worth more than $25? You know, are your services more worth more than $25? And frankly, I was astounded by the response because so many of you all said, I didn't know that I could charge or I was, I'm about to, but I haven't because of fill in the blank or, you know, I'm charging $25 or worse. I'm charging less than $25. I'm charging admin fees. And the worst thing to me is when people tell me they charge it and then reimburse it. I'm like, ugh, don't do that. Right. You all are worth more than $25 per person. And it's not to say that, you know, you only think that yourself is worth $25, but you have set the bar. No one has set the bar but you. You have the ability to change that, right? And so let's talk about how you can do that. And we're going to talk all about that right now. So I want you to first acknowledge that you have the control right? It's not the economy. It's not the market. It's not COVID. It's not anybody but you who has the control to change not only the fact that you don't charge or that you are charging too low. Okay. So I want you all to type me I or type I am in control. You are in control of the value and the price points that you set. The things that you aren't in control of potentially are your commissions from your suppliers, right? You don't get to control the, the, the host, the host agency's negotiated rate with, you know, Carnival, right? You are in control of how much you charge for the services that you provide to your clients. You are in control, right? I love it. I see so many people writing, I am in control. And I want you to remember that every time you have a conversation with the client in the future and you say $25, you have the ability to increase that price, not charge it, Charge $500, whatever it is. Now, the client has the ability to say yes or no, right? But you set the bar, right? If you set it at $25, that's your choice, right? But that's not because that's what the market demands because there's other other businesses that are charging 250, 350. Just look at the post, right? There's several women who responded that they're charging 225, $350 for their planning fees, right? That's a choice. They are doing it and they're successfully doing it. And it's not because there are people that won't pay it. Ask those women, right? Many of them were very open in that post about the fact that, yes, people pay them. Right? Yeah, they're sure there's people that say no to them, but there are people that will pay for your services. It's all about positioning. So we're going to talk about what you need to do to make that happen. What I want to do also before we dive into the tips is really talk about expedient competition is cutthroat. My first question is why the hell are you trying to compete with Expedia? I'm not competing with it. Sorry. So, <laughs> you know, like the minute, like I, I think we must attract Nats, right? So we are like fruit lovers and, um, we love fruit, right? So there's always fresh fruit in the house. And in the summertime, fruit equals nuts. And so I swear to God, I have this big light that's like right here. And so every time I go live, there's like nuts that end up coming. So like, I, I don't want you guys to think I'm crazy. I'm being attacked by nuts. Um, so anyway, Expedia competition is cutthroat, but that's because you decided to play in the boat with Expedia. I don't compete with Expedia. I'm not a budget travel agent. You shouldn't be a travel, a budget travel agent. You don't have the funds to compete with Expedia. So stop competing with them, right? Stop trying to play in their sandbox. Get out of the sandbox, create your own sandbox, or go into a sandbox where they're not in. I don't want to compete against Expedia, right? Expedia has got way too much money, way too much of a marketing budget, right? They've got millions of dollars to dedicate to be the lowest provider. I'm not trying to compete with them and neither should you, right? And if your clients are competing with them, then you need to release them, right? So that's the first thing. Stop, stop operating in a space that you shouldn't be in. Operate in your own space or create a space where your ideal client is. Budget clients are not where it's at, right? The commission sucks, right? You can't get them to pay any fees, right? Because they can go to dot com, fill in the blank and get the cheapest flight, the cheapest whatever. But do you want those people as clients? 
I don't. Do you? Why are you chasing after them? Right? You want luxury clients, right? Or specialized clients, right? They don't even have to be luxury. I want specialized clients that want what I provide as a service. The problem is you guys haven't defined what you offer as a specialized service and then you end up competing with Priceline, Expedia and all the other low end, cheap end people, right? I'm not even trying to compete with like Vegas.com, right? I'm not trying to compete with none of that. Neither should you. All right. So let's talk about this case study that I read. So I reread this case study and you can go, you can go on HR, it's uh, hostagencyreviews.com, type in agency fees and she's got an entire like I said every year she does a poll of travel agents and she you know she tells you how many people are you know do, charging agency fees the numbers are still very low you know certainly I'm trying to make my mark in the the in the industry to help educate travel professionals so that they can start charging not only a fee but their worth that's greater than $25 but here's a case study that I read I didn't write down the lady's number name or not but you can find the article because literally I just I just read it about an hour ago but the case study is a woman who specializes in Italian travel she has many years of experience uh, curating uh, she lived in Italy for some time and so she's a travel agency and her agency specializes in custom itineraries in Italy so if you want to go to Italy she's the bomb.com to do right so what is the first thing you notice about that specialization right she's got an expertise in a particular destination and she's able to curate customized itineraries above and beyond what you can find at Expedia.com, right? She's curating a custom itinerary for her clients and 100% of her revenue comes from services. Write it down. I want you guys to type 100% of her revenue up until I think five years ago came from service fees. When I read that a couple of years ago, I was like, that is awesome. And then the article I read before that, 80% of that lady's revenue came from service revenue. The lady I read before that, I think she's out of New York and she has a membership program, which she charges $500 for her service, uh, for her planning fee. And she does an annual membership of $2,500, right? If she's, she said, she just did the math. If you plan with her for trips, that's already $2,000. Effectively, that $2,500 allows somebody to have her on retainer. Plan me this trip. Let me go somewhere else. She does, do, she does deal with the luxury and market, right? And she also is like a concierge for them, but she's got a membership and is collecting $2,500, right? specialization right I want you guys right specialization she's specialized she's she's created her own sandbox and now she's charging for it and she's found a client base that will pay for it you can do the same thing too right so those are just two case studies of people who are effectively charging they've specialized in something they are charging for that value and that specialization and there's no reason why you can't do. So let's talk about the three tips that I have that will allow you to successfully start charging for your service fees. Not only charging, but then start to make that your main money maker. And I'm talking about where greater than 50% of your revenue is coming from service fees, right? Now you've got many of you at 0%. The first thing that I want you to do is understand what is the value and the value adds that you bring to the table, right? Many of you are playing in the space of generalist. You, you, you aren't bringing value, sad to say. You, you, you're not giving value. You're not showing up as an expert in a particular area of this industry. And that lack of expertise or specialization is why you can't stand apart. And so specialization is the key here. What is the value that you bring to the table? I must say that word every single week when I come to you guys and talk to you guys about training. So I show up every week, pretty much damn near every week throughout the year. And I talk about the value of being a specialist, right? It is important 
not only to your business, it's also important into whom you attract. It's important in everything that you do around your business to identify what is your uniqueness in this market. How are you different than Expedia.com, right? Many of you all are, are, are uh, what's the right, right terminology? Many of you are, are de facto competing with Expedia and you don't even mean to because you've decided not to select the specialization or you've not, not, but unbeknownst to you didn't decide a specialization and you just started jumping in and you start selling, right? Stop. Stop doing that. Like, I can't say it any other way. I can't figure any eloquent way to say it, but stop it, right? Stop the madness, right? You don't want to compete with general travel agents. You don't want to try and be the cheapest travel agent. What you want to be is the travel agent that fills it, that, that provides one, two, three specialized services that they can't get anywhere else. Does that make sense? Like, got, yeah, you guys give me some feedback and let me know if what I'm saying hits home. You've got to understand your value and you've got to be able to articulate it. And also, what other value add-ons do you provide, right? You know, one of the host agencies, um, outside agents, they provide a CRM tool um, and their CRM tool is TESS. I don't even know what test stands for, um, but their 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 tool has this customer portal that is the bomb.com. Like I love Tess's customer. I don't I don't like everything about Tess, but I love the portal. Like I love that portal that allows your client to be able to see their itinerary, make payments. They can like pick things that they want to try out and it communicates with you. That's a value added product, right? Some of you guys are using what Travelfy and that's a value add product, right? Where it can connect to your clients and send them messages about their itinerary and where they're at and all of that. That is another value add, right? You're giving away those value add perks for free. Why is that not a part of, you've got to pay for Travelfy, right? Travelfy is not free to us. Travel Joy is not free to us. Tess is not free to us. I mean, Tess is a part of your CRM, right? But I'm a big advocate of the fact that you need to have your own CRM. But all of those additional features that your your CRM system or your itinerary system have, those are perks that you should be extending out to your clients, right? And there's a cost to that, right? It costs you as a travel professional, doesn't mean you give it away for free, right? So there's another opportunity to, right, bundle up what your value is, right? So you've got, you've got an itinerary service that's going to keep you connected while you're out of town, right? We have the ability for you to stay connected to us. We have, you know, whatever those value adds, you provide checklists, you provide document storage access, whatever it is that you do, identify what those things are and those become part of your value proposition. Are, is that hitting home? Are you guys understanding what I'm saying here, right? Those little perks that all of the software that you invest in, all of the tools that you invest in become value points that you provide to your clients, right? That has value. That value has a money number to it, right? That money number is something that you can then also say, hey, you know, this is, this is what sets me apart, right? When you book with Expedia, what do you get with Expedia? You get an electronic ticket and that's it. You don't get any damn customer service at the, you know, in the event that you gotta rebook your flight. Good luck with that, right? You don't get any specialized customized itineraries or interactive tools that work with them on site, right? You don't get all that. Expedia's not giving all that away. Right? That's not what they, what a client gets, right? But the additional things that you have that make your travel agency easier to deal with, easier to work with, makes your client experience even more. Those are value adds and you need to understand what they are, right? And you need to be able to speak to them, right? Not only the add-ons, but also what you bring to the table based on your expertise. All right. So number, uh, so what I wrote underneath here is, is there's two things. Your expertise is valuable. 
right? So if you specialize, like the lady that I mentioned in the case study, she specializes in Ita uh, Italy. She knows Italy like the back of her hand. She knows best restaurants, best activities. She's curating museum tickets. She's, I mean, you know, she's doing the work. She's making recommendations on the best restaurant based on her client's needs. And these are all custom choices, right? This is not just like, you know, let's go to Maggiano's, right? I don't know if there's Maggiano's where you all, right? But that's a chain restaurant. Hell no, don't be sending your clients to a chain restaurant, send them to some little hole in the wall that's got like the perfect red wine choice that they're never going to get before, right? That's based on your expertise. And if you don't have expertise, now is the time for you to be getting it, right? Now is the time for you to become an expert in a destination or a location or partner with host uh, travel suppliers that will give you that expertise like Kensington. They curate, they provide mm -hmm. destination specialists that are available to you. So if you book somewhere in Italy and you've never been, their destination specialist on site knows that place like the back of their hand, right? So again, partner with suppliers that are going to allow you to become the expert of a particular destination or become one yourself, right? That is value, right? That is what you can charge for. If you are just taking, you know, generic trainings that the supplier has and you're not immersed in that particular supplier's uh, properties and you've not been there those should be on your goal list, right? That should be the things that you should be trying to get to this year, next year as a part of your education in this business, right? Stop just being generic. Just stop being surface and then pissed off that you can't make this happen, Captain, right? Invest in your knowledge and your expertise, whatever that takes, right? All right, so number two, you guys ready for number two? What do your clients need? Understand what your clients need. And what do I mean by that, right? Do your clients, like you guys are doing basic stuff and you're getting basic results, right? And I'm asking you to dig deeper, right? If you've not done any market research and you don't know what your client needs, right? Shame on you, your responsibility, nobody else's, right? You need to understand your client intimately. What do they need? What do they want? You want to sell luxury, but you've never even been on a luxury trip yourself. You don't even know what that looks like, right? Right? So what I'm saying is if you don't have it, you got to get it either through paid knowledge uh, relationships that are going to get you there or somehow to understand what that luxury client needs. Do they need customized itineraries? Do they need activities planned? And I'm not talking generic activities, but do they need, you know, do in your questionnaire, are you asking the type of activities that they like to participate? Are they the kind of person that likes to go to the museum? Are you getting the museum tickets for their, for their trips, right? Are they, are they celebrating something special? Are they, do they require additional time of yours to event plan, i.e. wedding destinations, right? Do they need somebody on site for them because they are going to be so wrecked with worry like brides, right? Do you need to be on site? Are you offering that as a service, right? Even family reunions, are you offering that as a service, right? To help coordinate, you know, <laughs> their their cousin Tom and Joe and Henry and, you know, Auntie Maine that you got to get, you know, in because she always gets lost and she's always losing her cane. You know I mean, my point is, what do your clients need? Do you know it? And are you providing a service to address that? Right. And is that going to take you extra time? Because again, that's another value add that you got at the table. Right. So intimately understand what your clients needs are. Only you, only you are responsible for that. You can't assume that your clients are going to tell you out the gate. You've got to, you've got to pull that out of them. You've got to be asking the right questions. You've got to, you've got to know to bring up the conversation so that when it comes time for you to talk about how you're going to put their trip together and why you charge $500, they're going to be like, Oh, I didn't think about that. Oh, you're right. Yes, I do need that. Oh, or whatever. You understand what I'm saying? Like you've got to be at the table as the expert. You you got to be showing them that you've got their needs and everything that they could have thought you already got it covered. Not only that, but anything that is going to come up, you're going to get it covered, right? So knowing your customer is key, right? Number three, are you guys, before I go, I'm going to take, I'm going to take a breath. <laughs> I'm going to drink some water and ask if you have any questions and I'm going to go to number three.
All right, somebody asked, how do I get a CRM? Simple. I will put a link, um, the link that I have to one of the CRM systems, which is my preferred. I've I've investigated, the. there's three in the marketplace right now. There's Travel Joy, Vacation CRM, and Tess. And I've used... I'll, I, I've, I've not used Vacation CRM. I've seen a demo of Vacation CRM. I have a client who uses them. So between the three of those, my preferred uh, choice is Travel Joy. Um, but each of them have their own thing that I like about them better than the other. Uh, Vacation CRM has this sort of built-in automation um, that um, and reminder system that I really like. Tess has that customer portal that I really like. No one has built a customer portal like Tess has. But Travel Joy has the ability to build um, group. Uh, I just like the way that you can handle your groups. Um, I like the direct pay and indirect pay that you can do with Travel Joy. So like I said, each of them, you know, I don't want to get into a battle of which is the best CRM because again, each of them have something that is good and bad about them. The link that I have is for Travel Joy. It'll give you two months, uh, 50% off, uh, I think they're $30 a month, it'll give you, so you'll get to try them out for two months for $15. So I'll put that link in the um, comments later after this call. But you just, you just, you just, you click on the link, you enroll in them, and that's it. That's pretty much how all three of them work. Um, I do recommend that you have your own CRM system, and the reason I recommend that is because if you ever decide to leave your host, you want to be responsible, you want to have your own data. Now, most of the host agencies that provide a CRM system, they make you use their CRM system so that they can pay you. I know that outside agents is like that. I don't know. I, I know that there are many other host agencies that have CRMs. There's too many host agencies. Again, I don't want to get into that. But really, you should have your own system. You want to be in control of your own finances. You want to be in control of your own client data. You want to be in control, control, control of your business. So I say, have your own CRM system. Manage your books. So if you ever switch out host agencies, you can always plug and play. You always have your client data. and You're not worrying about losing data or anything like that. Um, and like uh, someone just posted, some people don't, some host agencies don't have CRM systems. Some people, and they don't tell you about that. So again, you know, I could do a whole segment just on CRM systems alone, but I definitely recommend that you have one um, and that you have your own. Even if your host agency offers you one, I recommend you have your own in your own business name um, and that you're managing it yourself. So in the event you switch hosts, which you can, um, you have no problem uh, with your data and all of that. All right. So number three, are you guys ready? Type number three. All right, so this is the number three tip on making services your money maker. The number three tip for making services your money maker is make a decision to do it, period. You, like I said at the beginning of this conversation, you are the reason why you don't, service revenue is not currently being had in your business. It is, you are also the reason why it's not your 50% or greater revenue stream, right? It's because you've made a decision in, inadvertently or deliberately not to do it. So if you want to do it, change your mindset and do it. First, start charging a fee. Second, Make sure that the fee that you're charging represents the value that you bring to the table, inclusive of your value add-ons, right? Inclusive of the services and the needs that your clients have, right? So if I charge $500 for my planning fee, well, my planning fee needs to have some value and I need to under and be able to articulate what that value is to my clients, right? I'm going to curate you a customized trip that's going to give you X number of options. It's going to have blah, 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 whatever that may be, right? I encourage you today to write down the amount of money you would like to make from service revenue today. I, I want you guys to not only write, you know, not write it down later. Tell me now, how much money would you like to make right now for your service fee? So somebody just write, how much do you suggest? None of my clients start out less than $150. My recommendation is to start at $200 and go from there. So your planning research fee is $200 right out the gate. Should include three quotes at minimum, 
um, you know, and whatever, you know, whatever your specialty is, you know, if you're, and if you're in a highly specialized part of the industry, let's say wedding debt, wedding destinations, you shouldn't be at less than five, $700, you know, for quotes for planning. Right. So $200 out the gate. If you're doing groups, maybe more, maybe splitting that cost, depending on the number of people in the groups, but $200 out the gate. And you, and, and someone would be like, I can't charge $200. Well, why the hell not? Why can't you? So number three is your mindset, right? Number three is your mindset. You have to make the decision to charge. Not near one of you. Let me say it again. Let me be as, 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 uh, southern as I can possibly be. Not near one of you are doing work that is not equivalent to a $200 check. Every one of you is performing. If you're accurately researching, doing the work to research, destinations, itineraries, and what to do, you should be charging at least $200 for a uh, planning fee, at least, right? Many of you are still at $25, $50, and that's because maybe somebody told you that you should do that, or uh, <laughs> I did just use country grandma, <laughs> Which is so funny because I talk so proper. So I always think it's funny when I do that. So nonetheless, you should not near one of you are doing work that's not worth at least $200, right? So the work that you're doing is worth at least $200 if you're doing proper research, right? So you're looking at destinations, you're looking at reviews, you're putting together air, probably activities, right? You're looking at, I assume that you're taking in um, information before you do that and you're looking at uh, what their needs are. $200 should be your starting point, right? And you should go up from there, right? And so anybody charging less than that, to me, you're just giving away, you might as well give the shit away for free. If you're charging $50, I want you to tell me honestly, you charge $50 for your services, $25 per person. And for those that refund it, like I don't even want to talk about that, but you charge $50 and you spent a couple of hours researching, giving them a quote, right? And then they say, thank you very much. Does, does that $50 feel good? It doesn't, it didn't feel good when I did it. Right. It didn't feel, I'm not going to lie. It didn't like, I thought I was doing something. Don't get me wrong. I've been there. I've charged $50. I've been that person. And quickly I was like, bug that. I'm not charging $50. This is some bullshit, right? <laughs> not only that, when I first started, I started charging $50 and then I didn't have a, a quote, a quota on how many iterations I would do it. I'm going back and forth doing like, you know, 15 iterations. Oh, well, I want to change this. And oh, I want to change that. And I was like, this $50 is not worth it. Do you know how many freaking meetings I've had to miss to, to do this call and, and then go back and change the things and save the quote and do all that? The $50, shit, just picking up the phone and getting me on the phone for me to miss a meeting to talk to you is $50, right? So for me to actually pick up my computer do the research. I'm not doing it for less than 250 at minimum, right? So why would you, if you're doing the work, understand the value? Oh Lord, grabbing my pearls. I love that, right? So my point is, I think you guys get it, right? The work that you do, the value that you bring to the table is at least worth $200. I believe it's more than that, but your mind has got to at least get around this because many of you are like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of money, right? No, it's not. Right? Don't get me wrong. $200, $200. I like $200. I like anything that's multiple hundreds, multiple thousands. But the point is still, you're doing the work. You are of value. Charge your value, right? So number three is probably the most important. I should have probably started there. But I always like to end with mindset and what you can do because the only reason why you aren't doing is because you either didn't know or you're afraid to do it, right? And if you're afraid to do it, then you've got to work on this in your head and you've got to, you've got, you've got, I've just given you some homework. 
right? I'm just giving you some homework. I said, go research these two case studies that I just said I found within less than five minutes of women who are doing it. You can do this. There's no reason why, right? The woman who, I didn't catch her name, but go look at the post. She 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 said that she charges $225, $325, or $350 for her services without a, without a hiccup. She was like the one only person in the whole post thread that did that. And I was like, good for you, girlfriend. <laughs> good for you, right? None of my clients charge less than 200, right? And so many of you are not my clients. And I've just given you that tidbit for free. None of you should be charging less than 200. And if you feel like you can't, then work on the work on the girls in your head or the men in your head, right? Because uh, I see that there's some men on here. So the men or women in your head that are telling you that the, your clients won't pay for them, tell that per, that that voice in your head to shut the hell up because there are people that will pay for the work that you want. And I'm going to tell you even more so in a COVID world, right? Even more so in a COVID environment where an, a travel advocate is needed more than ever, right? I want to know somebody is looking after my assets, arses, right? My assets while I'm out of town, right? Making sure that they can help me rebook in the event that I get COVID while I'm out of the country, right? Right. That's what you guys are providing to the table. Forget all the extra shit. Just the COVID security of rebooking is what you should be selling. Does that make sense? Like this is where, this is the environment we're in. Okay. I said I was going to drop it and leave it. I'm dropping it like it's hot and I'm skedaddling out of here. All right. So, but before I go, what I want to just say is this, is your ability to make, okay, so I wrote this quote down. This is my own Sunday quote. Your ability to make service revenue is based on only one thing. You guys ready for that? It's based on one thing. I gave you three tips. I talked to you about 45 minutes about, but it's only one thing. And it's based on your decision to do it and charge it, charge your, your fee and worth, right? Let me say that again. The only, only thing that is keeping you from making service revenue is yourself. That's right. Somebody wrote it. Yourself. Your decision to do it and charge your worth for the value that you bring. All right. So it's you. It's on you. It's not the economy. It's not your clients. It's not anybody but you. Because if you meet a person that says no, then what you need to do to them is say, thank you very much. But behind the say scenes go deuces right? You don't want those clients that don't want to pay because I promise you those are mostly your headed clients anyway. All right. So with that, what I want you to do is remember that. Like I wrote, I like wrote all this big paragraph and really the reality is I just want you to remember that you control it. You are in control. And if you want to learn how I teach my clients how to do that, right? And not only how to charge what they're worth and how to charge it consistently, how to get the clients that will pay for it, then I want you to type fees. F-E-E-S and one of my clients of uh, specialists will reach out to you and we will talk to you about you and your travel business and see if our program is a right fit for you because this is what I teach all day long. I teach my clients how to charge the fee, how to do it confidently and get the clients that will pay for it, right? So type the word fees. One of our client su support specialists will reach out to you and we'll see if our program is the right fit for you and your business and what you've got going on. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you enjoyed tonight's training. I am actually going to be taking a couple of weeks off. We've got something really hot coming in the month of August. I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag, but I will be taking in the next couple of weeks off. So this will be the last live that I do in the month of July. Be coming back to you shortly, but look out for our big announcement in terms of what we got coming up right in August. We should be a, a dropping that announcement in the next week or so, but I truly have enjoyed all of you guys live and, um, I will remember to post that link to the CRM system and do not forget if you want to talk to one of our client support specialists about your travel business and to see if our program at Travel Passions to Profit program is the right fit for you. Just type the word fees and we got your back. Hey, you guys have a great uh, rest of your day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.